Let me say that again. Sin is living without your share. So, 1 Corinthians, and this is important, 1 Corinthians 7 and 24 tells us, Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. So, you are designed, see, you're going to be judged based on what you did with your share, with your part, with your call. That word call means that you have been invited. It means to call to name or to give a name. So you have been given a name. It means to receive a name. When you receive a name, you man is name and name is man. Your name determines your purpose, your part or your share. Let me say that again. This is very, very important. Your name determines your purpose, your share. So it's very, very important that you understand whose you are. Because you belong to the creator who gave you your name. As a part, you are a part of this creation. So you have been brought with a price. Therefore, you must honor the individual that brought you. That's what 1 Corinthians 6.20 tells us. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 tells us, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. So this is very important that you understand. Because see, if you do not have your share, 2012 is about the year of sharing. It's about sharing your share and caring. What is your share? Your share is your lot. Your lot is your destiny. Your destiny is your dear Kinnear. Dear Kinnear is a Greek word that means service or ministry. Let me say that again. Dear Kinnear is a Greek word that means service or ministry. Everyone on this planet has a spiritual ID or a spiritual fingerprint. You have been brought with a price, my brother. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to your creator. So it's, I mean, it's very important that you understand, overstand, and understand that. That's why I keep repeating it. I'm repeating myself for a reason. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word of God or the word of Yahuwah. So it's very important that you understand First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty-three. So First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty-three: Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye servants of men. See, we have been set free. Why go back? And Galatians talk, talks about, ye have been set free from the bondage of sin. Why go back into sin that you have just been set free from? This is very important. Why? Because you must operate in your share, in your part. You belong to the Creator. Now we can go into Genesis and all through Genesis, where it shows that God created man in his image and his likeness. So, the creator created Adam. Adam is the first man. We are all descendants of Adam. We were created in Adam's image and likeness. That's why we have a sin nature. So, I understand for all of you the theologians out there, I, I understand the difference and I understand that Adam is actually... The only man that was made in the image and likeness of the creator, Yahuwah, God. And we are made in the image and likeness of Adam. I understand the genealogy. But it's important because we have the same attributes of Adam. Because Adam had the same attributes of his creator. But we have been disconnected from our share. We have lost our first estate. We have a sin or a fallen nature. That is proof positive that we belong to a creator. We belong to the king of kings. And the lord of lords. Just like the scripture tells us that we do. So this is very very important. Why? Because we have been brought with a price. You must dare to be you. Dare to be who God created you to be. See. The power is in whose you are. Not who you are. Let me say that again. Your power comes from who you are. Your power comes from the creator 
of the known universe. He has invested a part of himself in you. Do you not know that we have this power hidden in earthen vessels? What is this power? This power is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me say that again. You have this power. We are vessels of clay. He has invested a part of himself. He put a part of his spirit into these vessels of clay. That's why we are animated. That's why we have this word. We have this power. The word of God is powerful. It is live. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. In the beginning was the word. The word already existed. Let me say that again. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. And without him was not nothing, excuse me, and without him was not nothing made. So all things were made by him. That's found in John chapter 1, verse 1. So we see that John 1, 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All things that exist were made by God. Was made by Yahuwah. The creator of the known universe. So now that we know who you are. who Now let's see who you are. Who does God say you are? Well God says a lot of things about you my brother. God says a lot of good things about you my sister. John 1.12 God says. But to all who have received him, those who believe in his name, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, he has given them the right to become sons of God. So you are a son of God. John 15, 1 tells us, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. So we are branches. That means that we are the conduit. Let me say that again. You are a biological, electrical, chemical being. That means that you are a vessel. That's why the creator is called the Lord of hosts. You are a host. A host is someone or something that hosts a foreign dignitary. So you hosting, right now you're hosting a spirit. A spirit is a ruling disposition. A ruling disposition is a group of related thoughts. A group of related thoughts is your most predominant thought. That's why you can have a spirit of lust. You can have a spirit of alcohol. You can have a spirit of fear. You can have a spirit of doubt. You can have a spirit of unbelief. That means that your ruling disposition, that your mind is consumed with a thought of lust, a thought of fear, a thought of alcohol. So a spirit is a ruling disposition. Your job is to make sure that the spirit that is ruling you is the Ruach, the Numa, the Holy Spirit. Why? You are you have been built. You are a branch that's connected to the vine, according to John 15. John 15, 15 says that I am no longer a slave, because slaves does not understand what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. So we are friends of God. Then Romans 3.24 tells us that we are justified and redeemed of God. But they are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So then it says that we will not be condemned of God. Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore found no more or no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, Yahushua says that you're not condemned anymore. This is just a fruit, a few of the scriptures, that what God says you are. Romans 8.1, and I'm not going to read all of them, but write these down. And whenever you are lost, whenever you are confused, whenever you forget whose you are, whenever you forget who you are, listen to this message. Romans 8, 1 says that you are a child of God. Romans 15, 7 says that you are accepted by God. 
Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, Colossians 1.2, they all say that or state that you have been called a saint. That means that you have been set aside by God. 1 Corinthians 6.19, which we just read, your body is a temple of God. Then 2 Corinthians 3.14 says that your mind has been renewed by God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that you are a new creation or a new creature in God or in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that you have become the righteousness of God or Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Galatians 3.28 Galatians 3.28 says and this one I have to read There is neither Jew nor Greek There is neither slave nor free For there is neither male nor female For all of us or all of you are one in Christ Jesus That's Galatians 3.28 Powerful scripture We are all one There's no more division my brother There's no more division my sister So why are we all Arguing. Why there's so much division within the body? Galatians 4, 7 tells us that we are no longer a slave, but a child and an heir. And you know, I, I must read this one. This is an important, this is a very important scripture as well. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir through God. Remember that definition of that word sin means living without your inheritance. Living without your share, your lot, your destiny, your purpose, your mission, your dream, your inheritance, and your God, Yahuwah. So if you're living without, sin is the absence, living without something needed. What are you living without? Your inheritance and their creator. It's known, or I call it the three P's. You are living without the person, you're living without the place, and you are living without the position. It's the about, it's about the person of Yahushua. It's about the place of the kingdom of Yahushua. And it's about the position of righteousness given to you by Yahushua or Jesus the Christ. The three P's. The person, place, and position. Help you to maintain your identity in Christ. See, you can go outside of Christ and try to establish your own identity. But why would you do that when you have already been given an identity? Ephesians 1 3 talks about how we are blessed. Ephesians 1 4 says that we're chosen. Uh, Ephesians 1 7 says that we are redeemed. Ephesians 1 11 says that we have predestined. Now, if you notice, Ephesians chapter 1 is a very important chapter. There's a lot of verses in Ephesians chapter 1 that establishes who you are. You can take personality tests, and I've done many. You can talk to a lot of people. You can go sit on someone's sofa. You can talk to a psychologist. You can uh, read your horoscope. There are many places and people who can tell you who you are. But may I humbly submit to you. If you driving a Ford, would you take your Ford to a Mercedes Benz dealer? And if you have a Mercedes Benz, would you take your Mercedes Benz to a Ferrari dealer? If you want to know the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing. Ask the creator of the thing. My brother, my sister. This is Master Teacher 33. You belong to your creator, Yahushua. There are many creators, but you belong to the supreme generator. Remember that word father means generator. Generator is one who emits power. One who creates. One who starts. One who produces. Your generator, Yahuwah, has created you. He has brought you, paid for you with the blood of his son, Yahushua. Don't forget who you are and who you are. You are more than what you have become. Remember who you are and remember who you are. You are a son and daughter of the king of kings and lord of lords. Walk like a son and act like a son. This is Master Teacher 33. For more information, go to my website, www.masterteacher33.com or www.eaglesclub.com. This is Master Teacher 33. I want to thank everyone for joining me on today's show. Yahuwah loves you. God loves you. Yahuwah bless you. God bless you. I love you. 
And as always, I will see you in eternity.